Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have a returning guest with us, Daniel Noon, who's the CEO of G2 Goldfields. G2 can be traded as GTWO on the Toronto and as GUYGF on the US OTC. Uh, they just came out with some exciting high-grade gold results out of its OCO uh, prospect uh, uh, project. Uh, we're going to discuss that today, but Daniel, before we get started discussing the recent drilling results, on the new presentation on the front page, it says, G2 Goldfields, lightning strikes twice. Could you explain what the motto is? What does that mean, lightning strikes twice to those who are new to the G2 story? Hi, Jeff. Uh, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me back. Um, G2 Goldfields was founded uh, by the founders of Guiana Goldfields, which was uh, successfully discovered the Aurora Gold Mine <clears throat> in Guiana in 2004, uh, took us through feasibility and built the mine in 2016. So that was the first strike of lightning, and Patrick Sheridan, who is the executive chairman of G2 Goldfields, uh, was the founder and CEO of that company. Uh, I was the uh, vice president of exploration and director. Our country manager, Violet Smith, uh, was also there at the start, and our Vice President of Exploration, Boaz Wade, was the Head of Exploration around the mine site. So uh, after that was sold to Vision Mining, we've, we've come away and we started G2 Goldfields, you know, in the southern part of the Cuny Basin, about 35 to 40 miles away from the Aurora Gold Mine. And uh, with our first holes in uh, November of 2019, uh, we made a discovery at the uh, OCO project in that area, the Aramuoko district. So that was the second strike of lightning. It happened a bit quicker than we thought it might, but uh, so that's where that uh, phrase comes from. Well, you know, the Guyana Shield has gotten some um, recent attention. Uh, there's millions and ounces of gold in this Guyana Shield, and this team at G2 has the experience and the track record of finding um the these deposits uh talk to us about the guiana shield and the excitement around that and why g2 is the go-to exploration company for this guiana shield okay so the guiana shield is uh technically the western half of the leo man shield which is northwest africa and they were together about two billion years ago when all of these gold deposits formed. Now, that Northwest African Shield has uh, um, been discovered about 300 million ounces over there in the last 25 to 30 years. And on the western half, over here in the Guiana Shield, there has only been historically 100 million ounces discovered, um, about 70 of them in Venezuela, and the rest scattered between Guiana, Suriname, and French Guiana. So it's very underexplored. Uh, certainly, the major companies have now decided that it's time to get over to the Guianas and uh, get working. It's a little bit uh, more challenging than Northwest Africa. It's, it's covered with more jungle. But the uh, potential is that there should be another couple of hundred million ounces within the Guiana Shield to discover. So we were there like 25 years ago, uh, banging away. But now, certainly, we have plenty of neighbours, but we have a good land package. Um, we think it's the hottest uh, territory in the world. Certainly, uh, Richard Goldfarb, wrote a paper in the SEG last year saying that the uh, West African Shield was the most prolific uh, gold belt in the world. So it's, it's a hot place to be, and we've got a good land package, a district-scale land package, two of them, and uh, we've already made our first discovery, so we're, um, we're very happy with it. So let's talk about the first discovery that you've already made and the recent drilling results. This is from the Oko main zone, am I correct, Daniel? That is correct, Jeb. So that's where we started drilling in 2019. Um, we hit straight away. And we were drilling. We drilled the first 45 holes, and they all hit. It was amazing. Uh, it was one of those ones which you never really understand how it can be like that. But then after about 45 holes, we started to um, step back, a uh, big step out, about 200 metres back to the east. And we had a row of holes which appeared to have drilled underneath the system. Uh, so we had to go away in the holiday break, uh, do our modelling and come back and figure out where the higher-grade fatter zones were, which is all x 
situation is all about. So we went away and modelled it uh, in 3D. So now we've come back to the figure that there's a basic dilation or a, a flexure in the shear zones around the main zone. The shear zone runs over two kilometres north-south on our land and it's mineralised the whole way. But the main zone is where we've focused drilling. Um, and really what's happened is a flexure. So we've basically opened up six parallel shear zones uh, with a high-grade gold and um, that's what we came back to test this year. Last year we were thinking maybe we had three uh, shears then we modelled it and we come back and we've drilled and there's definitely four of them, um, sorry, six of them, four of them within the carbonaceous shells, which tends to uh, uh, drop out the high-grade gold and two within the volcanics, which tend to be uh, broader zones at lower grade. So it's uh, really opened up the, uh, the main zone and we also have, have uh, determined that it's a, the shape is plunging down to the northeast, so it's open to the north east, very much so, and uh, to the southwest it will eventually uh, uh, go out into the air, but we've got a bit of drilling to go down that way as well. So, no, it, it's, uh, it's been a good round of drilling this. Um, certainly in the first two holes, we hit, in both holes, we had uh, uh, two zones in shear three and four in um, hole 65, you know, plus five metres of... Uh, uh, plus uh, 10 grams, actually it was 5 at 19 in the uh, zone 3 and 6.5 at 13 in zone 4. And then in uh, hole 66, shear 3 came back with 1.7 metres, it's just above an ounce, and 6.5 metres and half an ounce in shear 5. So, I mean, we really have, we think we've nailed the model here. So we've got a lot of drilling to get on with here, but um, I'm very happy with that. But also we've still got to explore further to the north and to the south along the main uh, OK, Shear, and then also the rest of the uh, 17 kilometres all the way to Aram and mine uh, certainly needs a little bit more attention as well. But no, it's, it's been a very good start of the year. And I guess uh, you are drilling currently, and are there more assays pending? That's correct. So we've got, um, we just started the eighth hole. So we've got five holes somewhere between being at the lab and on the way to the lab now. So the turnaround down there has been about six weeks, but now that we're starting to get results, we should see a steady flow uh, of drill holes coming to us. And so so people understand here the the, uh, the size potential here. You have Oko, you have uh, Aramu, if, that, if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly, um, and then you have this anomaly in between it, um, where uh, it's called the Tracy uh, anomaly. So this could be the bigger picture here, Daniel. If you could highlight what could be the bigger picture of this as a district. Yeah, exactly. So when we started out, I mean, our attitude was we want to control a whole district. At the end of the day, that's what really the major companies want to buy when they make acquisitions. So basically the idea was to go out, pick up a district, and then you've got a better chance of finding the, the five million ounces uh, which a major company wants on the books when they buy you. So, And in these uh, orogenic deposits, generally you, you will find a, a string of pearls. So basically you'll have a number of deposits along a, along a uh, trend, you know, several million ounces and in, in each deposit, and that's how you build large... Uh, tonnages and grades. So at a shanty over eight kilometres, we've got 70 million ounces. Now, I'm not saying we've got that. <laughs> That'd be nice. But at Toronto, they had four and a half million ounces over a 12k line, and they had five pits on that. So that's the style of mineralisation we're looking at here. I mean, obviously, these things also go very deep. But you, you want to own the district, and you want to own, uh, and you want to explore it all for the for the for all the deposits along that trend. So we've got Aramu in the northwest, which was a mine, in the early 1900s, that was mined at about half a gram, half an ounce a ton. Uh, Tracy in the middle is another two and a half k long soil anomaly, which has never uh, been drilled until we stuck some holes into it last year, um, some scout holes, which came back with mineralisation under uh, our trenches, but not anything that would be economic. But certainly, it's a very early day for Tracy. Um, like I said, Aaron is more advanced. We had a hole there that had three and a half metres at 10.7 grams. So we'll be going back there definitely to uh, follow up on that. And the setting is very similar to what we see at OCO. So we have a, a package of rocks which have uh, two uh, groups of um, carbonaceous sediments across 350 
centimetre package, and that's the same uh, structure and same geometries that we're looking at at OCO. So um, we've got great, great hopes for Paramu, and like I say, at Tracy, it's very early days. Um, but we, we we have to have that district. We also have the Peruni district about 35 miles to the southwest with the historic Peters Mine and the Jubilee pit on it, um, which we hope to build this year as well. So let's give a little bit of some, we know the results here from OCO, which was impressive high grade drill results, gold results coming out of OCO. Um, you also will be following up holes on the Aramu. You also have a maiden drill program. Tell us a little bit about Jubilee Creek and the Peters Mine drilling in May and June. Okay, so Peters Mine was historically a mine that uh, was mined by an American company in 1906 to 1910. It was a high-grade mine. It ran at about 40 grams a tonne, you know, more than an ounce. Uh, it was only mined down to the base of the satellite, so 150 feet. Um, it's had some drilling uh, post that, and there's some spectacular high-grade uh, mineralisation there in a high-grade chute. So we want to go back and uh, drill that to a depth of, say, down to 500 metres. And um, we, we see repeatability as they go down these flat-lying structures with high-grade, and we'll see how much ounces we can add there. But also to that land package to the south, uh, we've attached the Jubilee uh, prospect, which has been privately owned for the last 30 years and mined by the Bacchus family. So it's never been drilled. And we plan to do a maiden drill program there in the uh, second quarter here. So exciting times. Uh, that's, a, that's a district which has had a lot of uh, artisanal mining on it historically from the early gold rushes in the 1870s. So, but uh, not a lot of drilling. So we're pretty excited about getting out there and seeing what we can find. So today we're speaking with G2 Goldfields uh, CEO Dan Noon. The symbol's GTWO on the TSX uh, venture, and it also can be traded as uh, GUYGF on the OTCQX. Very strong management team. Uh, have have already have a successful track record of, of making discoveries. Um, Guyana is getting the attention of the majors. Um, management's invested over uh, $5 million to date, and... Uh, let's talk about a little bit so people understand about some of the shareholder support that you have. Um, this isn't the typical junior mining company where, uh, you know, you have some strong investors that have invested and have strong track records. Can you explain that to people who are new to the story? Okay. So, um, uh, I suppose the first impressions were about Patrick and myself. Patrick, uh, uh, controls about, I think it's about 27% of the stock still. I've got about uh, 6%. So outside of that, there's Northfield Capital, which is uh, Robert Cudney, who was uh, in very early with us as well and participates always in the financings. Uh, they've got a great track record um, with uh, backing early state discoveries and selling them for uh, lots of money. And he was early back with Gianna Goldfields as well. Uh, they also had FNX. And they also had um, Southern Star, which was uh, eventually sold with Exol to uh, for a billion dollars to uh, Gold Corp back in 2007, I think that was. So, I mean, it's definitely a good backer. The other backer we have is Eric Spot, who came in last year for um, it was $3 million. I think it was about 7 million shares. So, he's a great backer as well. He'll always come in early if he sees the right stuff. So... Uh, definitely got the uh, backing of strong shareholders. So you have strong shareholders, strong management, and lots of news, lots of drilling, lots of exploration, and hopefully in a good gold market. And the and the price has come down considerably. So uh, it's an exciting opportunity and a time for G2 Gold Fields, which can be traded as GTWO on the TXX venture. It also can be traded on the OTCQX as GUYGF. You can get more information at G2, the number two, goldfields.com. But you can also call them at 416 628 5904. And you can find them on Twitter at G2 Goldfields. Uh, that's their handle on 
Twitter. Thank you, Dan, for being here with us today and for giving us a, an update into the company and some insights uh, into the current program. Thanks very much for having me, Jeff. And hopefully, I uh, will be back with better news or more good news uh, sometime shortly in the future.